Welcome to part 7 of my CD collection. Got another box of more CDs, so here we go. Uh, first one we have here is, uh, what is this? The Side Room Cocktail EP. Uh, electronic project uh, from England, I believe? It's not bad, and I honestly don't think this is on YouTube. So, I think I got this for like, I don't know, two bucks at a Goodwill. See, it looks like a cocktail. It's not bad, I might upload it on YouTube, and there's nothing in the back. Okay. It's still like a booklet. The soundtrack to the 2003 Hulk movie with d uh, music by Danny Elfman. I actually really like the soundtrack to this movie. I like the score. And honestly, the 2003 Hulk movie is actually my favorite. Yes, I know Hulk doesn't appear until like an hour in the film, but you know what? You know, it has more story to tell. It does have actually one song, which is uh, Set Me Free, which is... Uh, track from Velvet Revolver? Yeah. Which is a really good song. I got this at a record store in I think LA. Yeah. There's the Hulk right there. And here's the regular booklet. I think it actually folds out into a poster. As many of you know, I did a gameplay of the uh, video game based on this movie. Yes, it does fold out into a poster. There you go. Hulk screen face. The picture from the movie. Yeah, I do like the Hulk movie. I know people don't, but whatever. They th because it came out during a time when if it wasn't Spider-Man or what was it Spider-Man or Batman no one cared it's like a holographic kind of well not holographic but like kind of like colorful kind of insert right there Scars of Tomorrow, uh, the All Things Change EP. This is a metalcore band. This is the original release from 2001. I know they re-released it on a major label. But this is the self-released original version. I think you could still get this as lyrics. I'm not the biggest metalcore fan. I do like metalcore, but this is really good stuff. Now, on the other side of metalcore, we got the Best of Cold Chamber, part of the the Roots of Roadrunner Records series. You know, just a typical uh, Cold Chamber song. You got Loco, Big Truck. You got a bunch of songs from the first three records. Well, yeah, because uh, they have broken up by this point. It's not something you need to have if you're a Cold Chamber fan, but if you do like Cold Chamber, then you'll enjoy that. And there's the other releases, which I actually have another one coming up. I'll show. Cold Chamber were just like one of the best new metal bands, in my opinion. In fact, if you personally ask me, I know this is a controversial opinion, but to me, they were the first new metal band. You could say Korn, but, you know, Korn themselves don't consider themselves new metal, so. Cold Chamber Innovators, I hope they come back one day.
I've got like three copies of this album. Uh, I need to show my Stack X collection, but this is uh, Cult of Static, which is the last album released in Wayne's lifetime. This is the uh, bonus edition, which has what is this? This is a European press. This is a has a or a British press, I should say. It has WFO and looks that kill, and it even says insert to the cult of stack to get a, bo a third bonus track, which I believe was. Either Talk Dirty to Me? I think it was Talk Dirty to Me, actually. There's Tara. This book looks slightly different than the regular release. The regular re release just has this. Hold on. There we go. I like this album. Uh, I know some Stack X fans say that this is their least favorite album, but and to be fair, it's kind of it's mine too, but it's not bad. If I were to pick a favorite track off here, uh, I like uh, Z28, uh, Grind to Halt, Hyper is really good. And Stingray, of course, you know. Oh, this is... Okay, so this is... Uh, this is a G.G. Allen CD. What is this? If you know, don't, if you know G.G. Allen, you know. He was pretty uh, crazy punk rocker. This is a CD that was actually sold on his brother's site. Uh, the G.G. site. This is a fan-made CD. I don't think you could get this anymore. I got mine off eBay. But it's got interviews from 88 and 89. It says 86, but that's wrong. I did put these on YouTube. I'm pretty sure you can find them. If anyone's curious. Uh, continuing on with punk rock, we got L7, Pretend We're Dead. This is the uh, single, which has uh, Shove and Shitlist. This is the two pack, which were recorded in England in 1992. I just love L7, they're a great uh, punk band. It's got the lyrics. And here's the other disc, which has live versions of... There were two Pretend We're Dead singles. This is the second one. I just put this in here. But this has uh, Fast and Frightening and Ride On Through and Diet Pill. So you get the first disc. And the second disc. It has a, actually has a thing in there for you to put this disc in so it just kind of lives in here and here we have the L7 album Bricks Are Heavy I know L7 are going on tour this year to celebrate this album's 30 year anniversary which is cool because uh, is this my? I, I go back and forth between this and "Hungry for Stink" as being my favorite L7 CD. But then it's just rocking. Let's see, "Wargasm," "Everglade," "One More Thing," "Monster," "Shitless," "Pretend We're Dead." Of course, that's the big single. Yeah, if you haven't heard L7 they're really good I hope to see them live one day there's the inside which has a bunch of art I think some of this art actually has art by Th yeah Theo from the Lunachicks because I know they're, re they're really good friends
Oh, Silly Scream. This is actually a very, very obscure project from Wednesday 13. Yes, the Wednesday 13 of, you know, Murder Dolls and Wednesday 13, stuff like that. This is Miles of Smiles. I got this for like 15 bucks. It goes for like 70 online. It's really rare. And it's absolutely nothing like Murder Dolls or Frankenstein Drag Queens or anything like that. It's actually like pop music, if you can believe that. It's got five tracks. It's very like pop rock stuff. Very much of a departure from what Wednesday 13 is actually known for. There's the disc. There's the inside. I think they played like two shows ever. And then they broke up. I think that's Wednesday right there. Played guitar. I think some of their later stuff was like kind of like in the vein of uh, Frankenstein Drag Queens. Yeah, a lot of people just don't know about this band. I think it's on YouTube actually. I think I posted it there. But yeah, if you're a Wednesday 13 fan, it's good. But it's definitely not the same stuff you're used to. I'll just say that. Black Dahlia. Uh, what is this? Oh, Venus with Arms. This is the solo album from Black from the Dwarves, but it's really more of a solo EP. I know it's got uh, the dude from... Uh, Queens of the Stone Age before using Queens of the Stone Age. Nick Oliveri, I think that's how you say it. I probably butchered his last name. I know he's also in the Dwarves as as a member, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I like the song The Wicked. That's pretty cool. And uh, Let's Take a Ride is really good, too. If you're a Dwarves fan, it's sort of basically the same stuff. Yeah, he's... I, I recommend it. I don't have any other Blag CDs. I need to work on that. Here's another Gigi Allen CD. There's another one from the website. I don't think you can get this anymore, but it's got an interview from Cambridge, Massachusetts, 92, uh, when he was in prison. GGM Merle interview in San Francisco, 91. It says 92, but it's really 91. And probably the most interesting one is a phone call that Gigi's brother Merle made to Gigi after Gigi had played the show in San Francisco the Live and Pissed show I think that's also on YouTube I think I posted that nothing too special just yeah I know there were more but I don't have them all uh, let's see Oh, this is one of my prized possessions right here. You're probably thinking, oh, it's just a single. I'll show you why. This is a Catastrophe Wife with Gone Away. This is the Gone Away single from 2001, which has Gone Away, Happy Pickup Truck, and the Gone Away Fierce El Elvis Suicide Wedding Mix. But what's cool about this, there's the disc. It's actually, I don't know if you can see that, but it's signed by Cappy Ellen herself. It's actually one of my prized like autographs ever, because uh, as far as I know, Cappy Ellen's actually sick at the moment with uh, liver disease, and she 
he no longer signs autographs, so happy to have that forever. No, I technically do not meet her, but I do have her autograph, so I guess that's the closest I'll ever get to meeting her. Here's the Hitch soundtrack. You know, the Will Smith movie. No, yes, before you go in the comments, yes. I like Will Smith as an actor. I hate him as a person, obviously. Everyone knows this. Well, some people do. But his movies are actually pretty good, so. Got John Legend, songs by John Legend, Earth, Wind, and Fire. It is a good soundtrack from a good movie. Here's the disc. It's a rom-com, so, you know. I know not everyone's into that. Will Smith, keep my wife's name out your frickin' mouth. Yeah. <laughs> There, yeah, there's the disc. Has the hype sticker still, Stu? Ha! Still. Has the hype sticker still. Yeah. Here we got... This is actually on my mom... I think this is my mom's CD. This is a Ren and Stimpy, You Idiot. This is basically like songs from the show. On a CD. So it's got... Dog Pound Hop, which is I think the theme... Happy, happy, joy, joy, fire dogs, captain's log, let's see, Savannah theme, big house blues, basically the soundtrack to the first three seasons of Ren and Stimpy, so it's got like half stuff from the uh, Spoonco era, or Spunko, and half of the games series, so. Well, part of the games animation series. This is old. This is like from 93, I think. My mom's had this for a long time. My mom used to watch Ren Stimpy in college. When he was on Nickelodeon. That and Doug were the only shows that she watched in college. She didn't really care about Rugrats, but, you know. So I was talking about Murder Dolls earlier. Here's their first album, Beyond the Valley of the Murder Dolls, which actually just celebrated its 20-year anniversary. I know two of the members from this are like trying to make merch off of this album, and apparently it's not authorized by Wednesday, so it's kind of thing going on right there but yeah this is some great stuff uh, May Ben Graves and uh, Joey Jorson rest in peace they were a great team and uh, oh yeah there's Trip from Stack X this is just great like 1976 uh, people hate me slit my wrist uh, she was a teenage zombie. Mother Effer, I don't care. Just, ah, just great horror punk classic. There's the band right there. I would like to get this on vinyl one day. You got the lyrics to all the songs right there. Yeah, I don't have the the second Murder Dolls album, but hopefully one day I'll get it. What is this? Oh, the Nihilistics. My favorite New York City punk band. This is the first album and the first single. Which comes in a glow in the dark CD, but. I think my, uh, the disc either just doesn't glow in the dark or miss false uh, advertising. 
But yeah, great punk. Very, very, very dark stuff, but it's pretty good. Love and Kisses. Let's see. No Friends. Welfare of the Rich. Welfare for the Rich. Badge of Shame. Black Sheep. Ugh. Such a freaking awesome album. Really, really like these guys. I need to get more from them. Wish they would come to California. Here, a picture. Message from the band right there. I think I posted this online. Yeah, there's the disc. I think you can still get this. I need to get more nihilistic stuff. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm going to get some hate in the comments, probably, whatever. But I do like Charles Manson's music. Call me whatever. Call me uh, insensitive. But Charles Manson's music, in my opinion, is pretty good. I think he was so, sort of an interesting guy. Crazy, but interesting. I got this at a record store in Arizona. It's like Charles Manson playing on the acoustic guitar. It's pretty good. He did have a good voice. It's just kind of a shame he went crazy. There's the disc. I know this is kind of hard to find, too. Oh, boy. I'm not showing that. Okay. Anyway. There's the inside. But if you want to see what the inside looks like, just look up the thing on album on Discogs. I know. If you like Charles Manson mu music, cool. If you don't, then whatever uh, Smash Mouth this is the East Bay Sessions I don't know if this is official or not I'm pretty sure it is this is like a live album from like 2001 I want to say but it's not included in their official discography so I don't know what the deal is with this? It it looks very bootlegish too. I mean, it might be official. I'm not saying it isn't. I'm just saying it looks like it. East Bay Sessions, you know. Yeah, you gotta love Smash Mouth, you know. I have, I have another one CD somewhere. I'll show that when I do find it. The Get Up Kids. Uh, something to write home about. Great, great emo band. Yes, they are an emo band. I don't care what the guitarist of the Get Get Up Kids said. Oh, we're not an emo band. We don't want to. No, they're an emo band. Get over it, assholes. <laughs> All right, enough about that. Uh, that just gripes, grinds my gears so bad that these guys aren't considered emo, but they are. Don't listen to it, anyone that says. Anyway. <laughs> We got great tracks, Holiday, Action in Action, uh, Valentine, Red Letter Day. It reminds me a lot of um, high school, this album. This is the 10 year anniversary edition. Wait, is it? No, it's the original, never mind. I know there's an another edition. Wait, yeah, it's the original, okay. I'm being stuck. I'm being dumb. Okay, anyway. There's the disc. It's great. Uh, innocent like music. 
very poppy, very, very poppy, but I like it. I don't think I've ever seen the booklet like this. But it's got lyrics, okay, some pictures. If, if you want a, melan a great melancholic album, check out the Get Up Kids. Oh, hello. <laughs> I need to... Yeah, they're starting to fall. Hold on. There we go. Oh, here's another GG CD. What is this? This is from, let's see, Interview from 87, 89, and 84? Another one that's pretty hard to get. Oh, again, all these are on YouTube at this point. I like to get my hands on the other ones, but... Eh, one day. Kicking Daisies. This is a pop rock band. Uh, Keys Keeping Secrets EP. I know these guys were on... I think they were signed to Disney at once some point. Yeah. This is before they were signed to Disney, but they lasted pretty shortly. I know they were on an episode of... Um, that's something with the Chance spinoff. Uh, so Random? Yeah, they were on an episode of that show. I think the whole EP is on YouTube if you look. It's just, you know, typical pop rock. You, you know, if you like the Jonas Brothers or any of those kind of pop bands, you'll dig it. Alright, this is interesting. Uh. Okay, so this is a copy of Slayer's Divine Intervention. I think this is a Europe... I don't know the information on this, but... It's a copy of Divine Intervention, but it's signed by both... Carrie King... And... Tom Araya? At least I think that's their autographs? I'm not sure. It'd be really cool if they were. And it just comes with a regular case, so I don't know any info about that. This release, it might be a European press or yeah, printed Germany. Okay, yeah, there you go. But yeah, Scotta Love Slayer. There's the disc right there. Guys, nice cuts. Red right Slayer logo. If you want some good thrash. Yeah, Slayer. There's Carrie. Is there a picture of Jeff in here? Yeah, there's... Let me fold this out. Here we go. You get, like, pictures of them. Gotta love Slayer. Oh yeah, by the way, to people who say Slayer were a new metal band at one point... Nah. You read wrong stuff. There's... I think that's Jeff. That's uh, Paul, whatever his name was. Paul something. What was his... It says... I don't know. Probably not. Okay, whatever. It doesn't say. Don't say it. But his name is Paul something. He was after, I think, uh... Dave? Yeah. Anyway, let me get... Put that back in the... There we go. Yeah, there we go. 
Project 86. Hell yes. I have a couple of CDs by these guys. This is, uh, what album is this? Drawing Black Lines. It's good new metal right here. Uh, Me Against Me is a good song. I like Star. Chapter 2 especially is a good song. I wouldn't have known about these guys if it wasn't for my friend. Shout out to um, Detox Tube. Great channel for the new metal and stuff. I recommend him. I know Project 86 kind of later became like post hardcore, but this is still when they were sort of new metal. Well, they were very new metal here. What am I saying? Anyway, got pictures of the band right there. I highly recommend Project 86. I have their first album somewhere. It's scratched to hell though, so I need to get a new copy. Take these out. I mean, we got, we got one, two, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, we got twelve more. We can do this. Seven thousand dying rats. What to say about this band? These are like think of if Mr. Bungle was a grindcore slash thrash band. That's basically what you get with these guys. You've got the funniest song titles too. My Nordic Butt Can Rule Nations. I just broke up with Jim O'Croshe. Uh as Narcissus catches his own reflection in the party ball. <laughs> Just some ridiculous, ridiculous stuff, but I like him a lot. There's a guy with like a Viking kind of look to him. These guys are super goofy, but they're so great at the same time. If you if you like Mr. Bungle and Grindcore. You'll like these guys. Some of it's just plain comedy rock too. Which, you know, some people might find enjoyable. This is their album, Fanning the Flames of Fire. I found out about those guys because they played at the, um... I wasn't there, obviously, but they played at the, uh... forgot what festival it was, but I know I Hate God and the Mer Junkies played that place too. The Jabbers with American Standard. This is a pretty hard to find CD. This is the Jabbers after Gigi Allen passed away. They recorded this album in 2005. Some really good stuff. Like uh, some covers too. You got Lucky 13, got Sucker Punch, I'm a Mess. Shame they haven't recorded anything else, and I'm still wondering why they're not playing live, but you know, it seems like the only time they really play live is these days is uh, Gigi's anniversary, which wish they would come to the West Coast, but. Yeah, you know, what can you do? Here's the disc, and there has the insert. It has guest vocals from Jeff from Anti Scene and some songs. You got the lyrics in there. I know there's an EP that came out before that, but this it has like alternate versions of some of the songs, but yeah, too rare. I doubt they'll rep repress it. If they do repress American Stand on vinyl, I'll definitely buy it. Here's Flee the Scene. Uh, I bought this for a friend who wanted to hear the whole compilation. And it's a really good compilation. It's got a bunch of punk bands, you know, INDK, uh, Spunk. No, it's not the Spunk from. Uh, California. It's a different spunk. Uh, Nah, Riot Gun. I think I posted this whole thing on YouTube, actually. So you can find it. Just type in Flee the Sea Scene Compilation.
mostly uh, East Coast bands right here. The Unseen. They were pretty good. Might make it this into a two-parter, but whatever. Courtney Hate. You've heard of Courtney Love, right? Here's Courtney Hate. White Trash Superstar. This is a single. I don't even know if they made it much of these at all. It's very like kind of like garage rock. Yeah, two track single. Very ridiculous. Very over the top. And I don't think they ever recorded anything else. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think you can find some like live stuff from them. But yeah, pretty uh, pretty weird. We got here. We got catastrophe wife with money shot. This is a single from the second album. It has money shot, busiest shopping day of the year, which is a great song, and electro Nancy. Very rare. Not many made at all. I think I got this for like dirt cheap from a guy in England on Discogs. That's some good stuff. Oh, the CD. F oh, the insert kind of fell. Here's a Cold Chamber promo CD, which has three tracks on it: Notion, Tragedy, and No Home. All from uh, what album? I know what album it is. It's just I'm trying to think of what the um. I'm gonna get pissed off. Uh, it's from the second Cold Chamber album. I showed it in a video. Whatever. But yeah, it's three tracks from that second Cold Chamber album. Same versions, not really much of a different, more of a collector's item thing to have if you're a Cold Chamber fan. Now this is a bootleg right here. This is Pantera's second real album from the 80s. This is Projects in the Jungle. Uh, you know, the, uh, they, they try to bury this era, but you know, us real fans really know uh, the real era. This is with Terry Glaze on vocals. Of course it's a bootleg printed disc art, you know. It sounds good, though. I think it was taken from a cassette. If I'm being genuine. I still need to get the first Pantera album on bootleg, and I don't think I'll ever own it on vinyl, because people want way too much for it. And they won't ever release it, so... Re-release it, so, yeah. We got Cold Chamber... This is a bootleg. This is Cold Chamber Ozfest, which has really a two dates from Ozfest, although I think one's actually from the, not the whiskey, but the Troubadour, show the Troubadour, and it's a pretty old CDR too, like half of these tracks don't even play right anymore, although one of the tracks is actually from Ozfest, in 98, there's Dez right there. I was kind of lucky to burn this when I did because I don't even think it plays that well anymore. Next up we have Dust Down the Sun produced by Slipknot's Clown. This, I didn't get into this for the longest time. I was like, uh, eh, they're an alright band. But then I was like, heard it and I was like, these guys are awesome. Uh, like the song uh, Medicated, Enslaved, Pure American Filth, Scapegoat. That's probably my favorite track off this whole thing. Such a good album. I know there's a Japanese edition which has like two extra songs on it. Which are may I may or may not get one day, but never know. Yeah, 
pictures of the band members right there. One of the guys has like a face tattoo, which I think looks pretty cool. Yeah, I wonder why they never made it bigger. Should have. Got a couple more. Here we have Cold Chamber, Giving the Devil His Due. This is a compilation album featuring DB sides and demos. Even still has the hype sticker in there. Uh, it has the last song they recorded until 2015, which was Headstones and the Walking Dead, which is a good song. Some remixes, originals, you know. I like the early demos. The song Babbitt is if it's Babbitt I'm thinking of. Yeah, I think it's Babbitt. Uh, it sounds like a like a Mortal Kombat kind of riff. You like you play that when you're playing a Mortal Kombat game. If you heard it, you know what I mean. You got pictures of the band. They were just great, man. I miss Call Chamber so much. I remember being really into them in high school. Because I think they were still around. When, well, they were around when I was in high school. They're reunited days, I mean. Yeah, check that album out. Drill 187. Uh, I know there's another band called Drill Something that I know Detox Tube does not care about. But this is a completely different band right here. Uh, five tracks. More kind of heavy metal influence than new, honestly. But it's pretty good. I gotta show one more. Yeah, check that out. I think there's an album too. And finally, we have the second Fabulous Disaster album. Don't have the first one, but I need to get it. Put Out or Get Out. Great pop punk from San Francisco, California. I recommend the songs My Static, Down the Drain, and Insane Today, and Red Blister. Good stuff. This is how I discovered Fabulous Disaster, too. He becomes with a little insert. Yeah, there you go. Pictures and lyrics. But yeah, that's my CD collection for there. Uh, see you in the next part. Oh yeah, there's the disc. But yeah, thanks for watching this part of the CD collection and uh, see you in the next one.